In this video, I'll show you exactly how you can make this animation in Blender. And what's so great about it is that it is fully made in geometry nodes and therefore is completely procedural. Now I do understand that it's quite complex and that's why I made a full video on my Patreon where I build this scene completely from scratch and explain every single step. I also want to thank all my Patreon members, it means a lot to me, so thank you guys. Also, if you're on my Patreon, you can grab the project file there and you can follow along. So without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. So I'm gonna hide this and get this asset. And before we go to the main action, which is gonna be happening on this rock, and we'll be spending like 90% of the video here, we first need to scatter some rocks around the main one, which are here, as you can see. And it's pretty simple, so I'm just gonna do that really quickly. But anyways, I have this rock. Uh, there are actually two rocks inside of this collection. So this one and this one, and they are in one collection. And I'm gonna use these ones to distribute them around this main one so let's just do that real quick in geometry notes i'm just gonna grab a plane position it underneath you can always adjust this later but let's just go to geometry notes and create a new setup and i'm gonna create a setup that i always do and if you're not familiar just pay attention it's pretty simple i'm just gonna grab these two nodes so distribute points and faces and instances of points Make sure to pay attention because we're going to be using those nodes and this exact same setup for the main one as well. So it's the same technique. But remember this collection, like I said before, we what we need to do is grab this collection. So mine is called the rocks aside and we can plug the instance into instance and nothing's going to happen. So it's because we need to separate children and research children. And now we also need to pick instance. And now there are too many rocks, so I'm just going to lower the density. And we need to adjust some of these settings. So first of all, you can adjust the seed, which is great. But now all of these rocks are rotated in the same direction, which is uh, not really realistic. And the way to fix this is pretty simple. We need to first add a rotate Euler. So let me add rotate Euler uh, normal to rotation and then we have this other socket over here and we can connect a random value here from like 0 to 100 but it's gonna rotate on all of the axes and we just wanted to rotate on the z-axis so I'm just gonna plug the z-axis and as you can see it only rotates on the z-axis and it's gonna rotate randomly which is great so now we can just uh, click through these seats and pick some that we like. We can also increase the density. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect for now. I'm just going to use this. But make sure you play with these settings. And now what we can do, we can finally move to the main rock. And before we do that, let me just explain what is happening here. So let me just hide this one. So this is the original seed. And as you can see, this is the node setup. So let me just zoom in real quick. And as you can see, we have the we have the main rock, then we have some moss here, as you can see. Um, so as you can see, some moss here, then we have some leaves here, then we have some small rocks here. And overall, we have uh, like three or even four, because I have like this, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but I have some grass here. So we have a lot of assets distributed on this rock. And if you followed along right now, what I just did for this one, for these rocks, then this process is gonna be pretty similar. So let's just go back here and enable this and start off with the new geometry node setup. So like I said, it's gonna be similar for the rocks we already did. So distribute points and faces and then instance on points now it's gonna disappear uh, which is something that we don't don't want and the way to fix this is to add a join geometry so we're gonna add join geometry and plug the group input into join geometry and what's gonna happen is we're gonna have the group input which is the rock visible while joining it with the instance of points so we're gonna now need to distribute 
the instances that we want to inst instance and these instances will be moss so i have this collection again i have uh, these assets and i just put them into collection and this collection in particular is called moss so i'm gonna plug it into instance again separate children research children pick instance as you can see we have something and we can adjust the scale because it's too big right now we can also increase the density which is cool and also what we need to do is now you can see they are all pointing upwards and it just doesn't make sense because um it should point in the direction of the normals so let me just fix this real quick and it's pretty simple we're gonna use the same setup that we did just earlier we're gonna add a rotate euler normal rotation rotation as you can see now it uses the normal and it points um, straight in a 90 degree angle from uh, the surface which is uh, what it should do and so we have something but in the original one as you can see it is distributed somewhere and somewhere there is empty space uh, so how can we do that how can we distribute it only on some parts while on some not well it's pretty simple uh, this distribute points on faces has uh, a different mode it has a poison disc so let me just choose a poison disc and i can plug this density factor over here you can plug whatever you want in here and what's gonna happen is gonna it's gonna be visible in the modifiers and you can do this for every single thing you can even do this for seed and i can change it in the modifiers which is really cool but we're not gonna do that we don't need to do that what we what we will do is we have this now we have this second option over here we can click this little button and everything's gonna disappear but don't worry because this is an important step so now we need to go into edit mode right and we need to go into data as you can see i already have these vertex groups i'm just gonna delete them and i'm gonna create a new one because and let me just call this most right and i'm gonna assign all of these vertices. so i just selected all of these vertices and assign them give it a name and now we have assigned vertices and what's gonna happen is now because we have this we click this button right here now we have this extra option here which is called moss so we can click it now it looks exactly the same so why the hell did we do this well now we have an extra option to go into weight paint as you can see everything is red and what red means is so one and when there's black the zero so black is zero red is one so remember this so we have these modes here uh, if you're not familiar with white paint we have these modes we can uh, choose add we can choose subtract these are the most popular ones so i'm just going to use subtract increase radius and paint everything black because we're subtracting and subtract black means zero so now when there's zero there will be no plants uh, no moss distributed and now when we paint it's gonna change the color and if we paint over here uh, we're gonna start seeing that some of the moss actually appears only on the spot that we paint on and i have this issue right now where i have this red value but there is still not much of these of this moss distributed and that's really easy to fix uh, i can always go to the density max and increase this value so i'm just gonna go crazy with this and it's gonna look something like this and i think this is fine i'm just gonna subtract this and you get the point so so let's just use this for example uh, i think like this looks pretty cool and what we can do now uh, for the original one what i did uh, let's just take a look at the original one so this is the original setup and if i zoom in into one of these i have this separated into four parts uh, so if i zoom into one of these uh, if you pay close attention it's literally the same uh, as what we just did uh, on the, this one uh, on the new one there are a couple of settings that we need to change 
which I will show you. But I basically just copied over uh, everything and then just join it with the geo geometry, geo geometry. So it's really simple because this one setup that we just made in like a couple of minutes, I just duplicated it and that's pretty much it. However, we have these two options that I want to talk about as well, which are really important. And I will, but in a minute, because there is one more important thing that I need to show you guys. Because once you do copy everything over, um, imagine, just imagine you have four of these, right? Just four of these. And you join them with geometry. Now, what you can also do is, if you want to make this an animation, you can uh, animate this value, so this rotation value. And you can do this by adding, adding a noise texture. So we have a noise texture here. We can ch change the mode to, to 4D. And now what we can do is type hashtag frame slash 300. If you don't know what this means, it's a driver. And uh, the higher the number, the slower the animation. So if I just play this, it's gonna appear to be purple. And if I play this now, you can see it's moving. So now if I increase this value, it's going to be slower. I think 600 works. And this way you can animate uh, these, this moss like it's flowing in the air. If we just go back here to the original one, as you can see, it has this really cool animation, as you can see. Um, so let me just talk about this. Um, I'm just not going to duplicate every single one of them because it's gonna take a lot of work and uh, the process is uh, status uh, the process stays the same so uh, I'm just not gonna talk about it but what I will talk about is the animation part so as you can see the way it animates and it's really simple as well so let's just go back over here what we need to do before we go back into geometry nodes we need to create an, any object it um, I'm just going to use a cube for this example. So let's just move it to where it was. It started over here, so let's just place it over here. Now we can bring this, where is it? Bring this cube 001 over here and click relative because we're going to be using the relative position of this cube. And we're going to create this simple setup that I like to use a lot of times and it's really fun to do this effect. So I'm gonna add the geometry proximity after this. And plug position into sample position. So purple into purple and green into green. Now you can choose between faces, points, I just it doesn't really matter because this cube has all of it. And now we have this distance value here. And what we can do is add a vector math. We can change it to scale. And now if you plug this into the scale, you can see if I move this scale this, the mass is gonna react to it as well. However, it doesn't really look uh, how we want, but we're getting somewhere. So there's one more node we need to add, which is the map branch. So let's add a map branch after this. And let's zero this value out and increase the two minimum value. So let's just see you something like this. And now when I scale it, it's going to work. However, I cannot see anything uh, because the cube uh, takes over the space. So let's just use a different object. So let me replace it with, uh, with a plane. Uh, so let's position it to where it was, somewhere around here. And we can always disable this in render, but I just didn't see anything through it. So I can just grab this plane again, uh, connect it to geometry and use relative position. And now we can scale it or we can move it like this. Or what I did in the original one is I played with the map range. So I can use this from max, which is going to basically act like a, like a distance value. And I can always like increase it and it's gonna increase in the distance from the plane, right? So just imagine that there is a invisible field around the plane as and as I increase this, it increases the field, which increases uh, the size of them. 
So this is how I make the animation, and what I would just do is I would connect it to every single instance uh, there is. So let, if we just go back to this one, uh, this one, as you can see, I have this setup right here, and it connects to the scale here, as you can see. I just use some multiply values to adjust the strength, and yeah, I plugged it to every single one of them. And then the last step that we use, that we have here is this little like distortion that's going on when uh, the animation happens. As you can see, this like a uh, wave basically, and that's because of this setup right here. So again, uh, let me just uh, debunk this real quick. And again, it's pretty simple. So let's go back to this one. And what we need to do is we need to add a set position. So we're going to add set position to where the group input connects to set position and then join geometry. And now we have this offset button. So let me just use the wave texture. Um, it doesn't matter which texture you use, but let's just use a wave texture for this. So something like this, and it's gonna look really messy, um, but don't worry about it, because what we're gonna add is a vector math, and what we need to do is set it to subtract and 0 0.5, because when you're using textures in geometry nodes, it's gonna average, it's gonna average between 0 and 1, which is 0, 0 0.5. And it's gonna offset everything, so if you subtract the zero to find it's gonna be on the exact position where you left it. Now what you can do is add math, multiply, and this is like a strength value. So as you can see, I can adjust the strength of this, um, this like uh, distortion. And also I can, you know, play with these values with the detail, with the distortion here. Yeah, so something like this, it's just used as an example. And remember this math range? Yeah, now we can plug this into the multiply value. And add another multiply over here. And change it to, let's just use like 1 as you can see, and 0 is 0. And what we can do is just put it to 1. And as you can see what it's going to do is if I play with this value it's not going to only distribute the um the mass is also gonna change the distortion distance if you know what i mean so as you can see over here now this is way too much so let me just decrease this to something like this and you can always add another multiply here to adjust the scale okay it seems like it doesn't work but i think if you just play with this value it's gonna be pretty fine so let's just play with this one and now if we animate this value so let's just let's just try this in action so 0 150 there is you know something like 65 uh, it's gonna look terrible because it's just gonna play with the whole rock and it's gonna look like jelly on the end oh, over here uh, which is something that we don't want what we do want is to have this effect only in the beginning and not the end so again i can just keyframe this value and 150 it could be zero so, uh, ints. and now if i play this you can see this in the beginning and then it stops so this is pretty much the setup and the only difference right now is I animated a light and also I added more of these instances on the rock. So that's on that's the really only difference that is between this one and this one. Uh, as you can see, it's literally the same. And like I said earlier, if you do want me to explain this a little bit more depth, I do that on my Patreon where I talk about it for like an hour straight. There are no cuts. It's completely edited. But anyways. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys learned something new, I hope you got some value out of this one. I'll see you in the next one, drop down a comment, and peace.